So, welcome. We're going to look at the Children's Discovery System from Mattel. This was released in 1981 for about $120, which is rather high. But it is an advanced electronics toy, and Mattel refers to it as a computer. And it looks just like it does on the box. Of course, I'll be showing it to you in a bit. Let me just go over the box first. So it has built-in activities, but there's also a cartridge slot over here. And that takes learning modules, and it says right here, you know, it comes with math, and then these ones with the white blocks next to them, those are available at the time of release, and then there's a bunch more over here that were coming soon. I don't know if they all released. I think some of them just got name changes. This was discontinued in 1984, so it lasted three years, which isn't too bad. And the sides of the box are both identical. And on the back of the box, it just goes over the details of the item and shows you what's in the box. I do still have everything, so I'll be pulling each item out. And this little guy here, he's pictured in a few different spots. He's called Cursor the Great. And I think he's a little reminiscent of the Intellivision's Running Man. I mean, he doesn't look exactly like him, of course, but when he's on the system, he runs across the screen, kind of like the Intellivision guy runs. I mean... Of course, back then, <laughs> there's not a lot you can do with the graphics, so, of course, they're made up of blocks, and this is an LCD, a liquid crystal display screen, so, yeah, everything is just individual blocks. Here's the, uh, Intellivision guy, if you don't know what he looks like. Of course, Intellivision was made by Mattel as well, so it's not surprising things, there are some similarities. This was released by Mattel Toys, but Mattel Electronics, which made the Intellivision, did handle tech support for this. It's possible Mattel Electronics likely designed it as well, even though Mattel Toys is the one that gets credit in the manual. It's just the top of the box. Alright, so it includes a nice 120 page manual, which is quite large, but it just goes over the basics and then a bunch on each mode that's built in. There's three of them. Music, art, and type. So this is the included module. The math module. And they didn't go with artwork on the boxes. Instead you get a big kid's face. Different kid on each box. And the cartridge overlay a mail order form it does come with an activity book I didn't want to jam it in there but it, it does kind of fit I mean it's supposed to fit these boxes have been flattened out for about 30 years so they haven't retaken the complete shape I guess but yeah it just would slide into there mail order form lets you reorder activity books or overlays if you lose them they charged 225 for an overlay and 250 for an activity book. And the modules that were sold separately cost about $21 each. This here is the cartridge. It is two and a half inches in length. Of course, the overlay and the box design also similar to the Intellivision. I've got one here for comparison. If you're not familiar with Intellivision, both the cardboard boxes with the flaps that open up and television had the controller overlays. Of course, this has a keypad one. So, this is the device. Not too big. Nine and a half inches in length. The screen is the unfortunate limiting factor, I'd say. Because you can't fit a lot on here. When you type letters, they take up going across eight characters and there's room for two lines so 16 characters in total and I don't know how well focused this will be on the, the little keypad the little letters here but it's got the alphabet of course it's not a QWERTY keyboard though it just goes in order A through Z and just the different modes and then the arrow keys this here is used for art mode so that you move an individual block so you get a little more room to work with than when you're typing but 
you just move an individual block across this whole screen and hit the mark button when you want to leave a mark and then try to draw a picture. I'll demo the art mode and the music mode that are built into this and then I'll play the geography module as well. The music mode built in uses just these two lines. It's fairly basic. There is a separate mu music module I own, but honestly I didn't want to take the time to learn it all. So I have a hard time seeing what's in focus, but this is just a lot more detailed for what you can do with the music. The individual notes are labeled basically, whereas on this keypad, these yellow letters here are representing what these are for music. Then you get, you can do effects and voices, so you get a lot more things to do. Let me also show you how these overlays go in. So there's gaps in the plastic here. So what you do is just bend this, put it flat, and slide it in like so. And it just comes right back out. So the device also has a speaker right up here. And it's powered by six AA batteries that go in here. Or if you have an AC adapter that's compatible, it would plug in here. It did not include an adapter or batteries. And I don't think a special adapter is made for this. It just tells you in the manual what kind of adapter would work. So that's about it for the device. Let me just show you the other modules really quick. Here's the music. The music has a big manual. There's no way that would fit in the box. It would have been plastic wrapped probably on the back of the box. Well, you can see there's just a lot in here. <laughs> and I've got words. And of course, geography. Like I said, I'm going to play the geography. So I'm going to reposition the camera and put it right up near the screen so you'll get a good look at it. So let me do that now. All right, I'm sitting rather close to the microphone, so you might need to adjust your volume. And I've got the camera angled really close to the device, so it's going to be a little tricky for me to type. I'll try not to bang into anything like the camera, <laughs> but I wanted you to have a good view. And it's hard, you know, to record a, a liquid crystal display screen without getting too much reflection but I think this will be fine so let me turn it on you'll see the little guy run across like I said he looks like in television's running man but he's called cursor the great so let me go with art mode first and probably looks like the screen's blank, but there is a cursor over here. I'll try to draw something really fast. So, you know, try to do it with one hand. <laughs> so you just move it each time, and you can hit the mark button to leave a, you know, a dark spot block behind. Now, I'll gotta try to use two hands, it'll be faster. And they show some elaborate things. Oh, <laughs> dang on. Getting all mixed up where my hands are. Where my fingers are. Uh. Yeah, they, just, they draw some elaborate stuff in the manual. I'm just doing something really basic here. And I did draw a picture earlier of a floppy diskette. I'm looking at this on an angle, so I don't know how well this looks. I may have drawn an extra block, I can't even tell. But I so said I drew one already, and I took a photo of it. And that's on the blog. I'll leave a link in the video description. Yeah, it looks like I missed a block. And the blog will also have scans of most items, but I didn't scan the, the, the manuals. They're way too long. <laughs> I did take a few photographs of the main manual. Oh, 
I don't know. Can you, I don't know if you can tell what I'm drawing here. <laughs> well, it's sort of something. All right, I don't know how well that looks, but it's supposed to be a tulip sitting in a flower pot. I think I kind of missed some blocks in there. That's okay. You get the idea. You just move it around, press the button to leave a mark. Sort of like drawing with a pencil, but screen space is limited. And unfortunately, you can't save anything. So, you know, once you turn off the system, it's off and that's gone and gone for good. <laughs> so one thing art mode, though, does do is not auto turn off. So at least you won't lose the picture while you're drawing. Because in any other mode, any other game, it'll auto turn off after two and a half minutes if nothing is touched to save batteries. All right, so I'm going to switch to the music mode. One of the activities is guessing songs. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to try to see if you can guess one of the songs. Most of them are kids' songs. There are some songs I don't even know what they are, but maybe they were well known in 1981. I don't know. Maybe they're just classic songs. So what I'm going to do is enter the notes. Just like I said, it's limited, so I can only enter part of the song this is the thing is wait, new song. so if you're actually going to play a full song you just have to type really fast i guess to hear it because i don't think you can go beyond the 16 characters when you're doing this mode where you just enter it you fill up the screen and then can hit press you know you can press play to hear it play but it's very brief so you may recognize this, but it gets cut off right at the end where it's just kind of picking up. I mean, you may recognize it as I type it, I suppose. Just doing this kind of slow. I look at the book here. All right, I'm going to hit play now. gets cut off right when it's getting good but you may have recognized it now this isn't a kid song this is actually the Star Wars theme so now that you know what it is let me play it again so yeah I say it gets cut off but you probably recognize it all right now I'm gonna play geography course with geography stuff gets outdated like math and words those remain the same but those are boring to watch so <laughs> this one's a little more interesting but before I turn it on I gotta add the overlay of course so let me show you the overlay so when I say things are outdated it has pictures of flags it includes 30 nations but it's just kind of um I wouldn't say random they picked just a variety from each continent so that it'd be a good mix but they couldn't fit more than that because it, it, because of the way you answer some of these questions you needed to be able to have a, a button for each one you, know, you couldn't really do multiple choice I guess because the screen doesn't fit very much and some of these countries like USSR don't exist anymore and then some of these flags change like South Africa's flag is different now there's a few of these that have changed let me put it into the keyboard here. All right, I'm gonna open the manual here. I'm gonna go through a few different games. They're very quick. I'll just switch games. I only just do like one or two per mode. All right, what happened? I have to hit the start button first. Okay. All this is is giving information. So okay, if I hit Costa Rica, <laughs> this is it's probably gonna be like what? Now, uh, what you're seeing here is a bunch of information that you kind of have to memorize, I guess to play all the other games 
So you get the reference key here. So the first thing is the continent, which is North America. The second is the population symbol. Now there are bars after each symbol. You can see like the one over here is high. This these two are really low. And those represent very small, small, medium, large, and very large. So this has a very small population, or did in 1981, though it's probably still relatively small when you compare it to all the other countries. The next one is the area symbol, so that would remain the same unless you know a country's borders change, but Costa Rica's has not. So it's also very small, and then income per capita, and then food production per capita, and energy sufficiency which is a unique one I guess to include but then that's what you have so now these other games kind of revolve around that so let me switch to game two which is Geofax so here you enter all the these items so we got Japan so I enter Asia and then since I've already forgotten what all the symbols mean. All right, so the population in 1981, you're basically guessing. Well, I guess you'll learn as you go. It doesn't matter if you get them wrong. So I guess I'll enter the middle one. Wrong. Wrong. Okay, it's very large. It's the largest possible. And the next one is the area, which should be small. Yeah, the second small, that's what I chose. And the income per capita. Wrong. That's yeah, the highest. Food production. Very small. All right, I tried everything else before that. And now how energy efficient is Japan? I don't, I don't know. Not efficient. Oh, it's the very worst again, very small. And there's a picture of the world map, and it's flashing. Yeah, it went very quickly. It was flashing where Japan is on the map. Game three. Odd Nation House. And I gotta read these really quick. Ecuador. Ghana. Bolivia. And West Germany. I would think Germany's the odd one out, but I don't know for sure what they're basing it on. So now I gotta choose which one is the odd one out. So you can see it on the keypad. That is correct. So that one was based on income per capita. All right, now game four. Yeah, stop, stop. All right, it won't let me get out of here. I don't think there's like a clear key. Right, there we go. Just have to wait for those to stop. So now, <laughs> it's just a complete guess. Because they start you with nothing. And each time you get one wrong, you get a piece of information. But they're so basic. I mean... It's just completely random. I actually, when I was practicing, guessed one on the first try. I just happened to, you know, one in 30 chance, and I happened to get it. <laughs> that was just dumb luck. Here, I'm going to hit Spain. Nope, it's not Spain. And now it shows me the income per capita. It's like the middle. I have no idea. How about Greece? You know, we see that it's a fairly large country, but not the largest. Hmm. Well, Mexico. Oh, yeah, got it right. And so that's the game. And there's other games you can do. Those are the modes built into it, but, you know, these manuals are big. They give you other ideas that you can create, you know, kind of your own ideas of what to do with this. And then they do a fold-out map as well. Camera's so close, I probably can't show you that. I can try. 
some of these you can do with two players. Yeah, so big fold-out map. <laughs> I know, just blocking the whole camera. And that's about it. I only have, like I said, three of the modules along with the one it came with, but there were a bunch of others. And I'm gonna leave a few other links in the description. One is for someone else's video of this. They, it's called Pocket Legion. They were playing it more as a game system. They consider this, I guess, a portable system because that's what they cover. And they have the arcade modes, the uh, the two arcade modules. So you can see some of the games they play. They're, again, of course, very simplistic and didn't look like they had much fun with them. And I'll leave a link for a commercial for this as well. Someone posted a old television commercial. So check those out. Check out the blog. Get a lot more information, a lot of images. And yeah, thanks for watching.